Hi everyone and welcome to today's latest mix set video for Monster Hunter World. Today's set is going to be focused on the new Tower Strongarm Water Charge Blade that was introduced to us in the latest Colby event. At the same time I'm going to show you two builds based around the weapon where one is a high rank set while the other is a lower but easier to make set so you never feel left behind. So firstly let's take a look at the new weapon. The Tower Strongarm Water Charge Blade has 648 attack which equates to 180 raw which is low in terms of doing damage to a monster compared to other charge blades with higher base raw. However, it also comes with a very nice chunk of white sharpness straight out of the package. 20% affinity, 1 augmentation slot, 300 water element and 20 defense making his lack of damage made up with his flexible stats. Now I didn't manage to get any other major or sought after weapons that was introduced to us in the event. But the new charge blade was a welcome one since this is now considered the first or second best elemental water charge blade in game when compared to the duo death charge blade which is considered currently one of the best charge blades water charge blades in game through playing around with the weapon i found that using mainly the sword and axe form both amped up or not allowed me to further push my damage considered to be a lot more higher as within axe and sword mode i had higher dps since i could move around faster and do large full frontal attacks to make full use of my files and then repeat when necessary. Much more worthwhile to use compared to using my SAED which sadly isn't the best all rounder use for elemental charge blades as the discharge performs a v-shape rather than a straight line which could make the full damage on your end at times be potentially missed as it's quite hard to line it up perfectly on a monster. But the great aspect about this weapon is that it has 3 types of affinity which honestly is quite helpful with max out affinity on your weapon. And at the same time it has a very large portion of white sharpness which can save the hassle of using a handicraft jewel or charm so on your end it's better flexibility in terms of skills you need compared to skills you generally want. Now alternatively if you never manage to get this weapon but truly want something similar to it then you do have the Jury of Death 3 charge blade which has 684 attack and 190 raw which is a 36 damage difference between the two and is considerably higher than strong arm water and also has 3 augmentation slots for your taking. However, it starts off at blue sharpness and can't reach white sharpness unless you have handicraft charm 3 or more to hit it and even then it's still not a lot given to you when compared to the strong arm's large sharpness threshold since I believe you need at least handicraft 4 to at least hit a considerably or moderate portion of white sharpness for the weapon and if you don't have a gear for that it kind of makes it quite hard to use it for end game. It also comes with 0% affinity and only 270 water which overall makes the weapon ideal for those that don't have the strong on water currently as it still gives pretty good damage but more focus and development will be required by you if you want to fully maximize this weapon to be better than an alternative since the alternative version has a tad more better stats compared to what you currently have with the jury of death. Now both weapons are great with their pros and cons and each are designed purposely for the players to build around them. However, it's just up to you now to decide on how you want to go about them as honestly, except from the stats, both weapons can be considered near identical to each other because of the similar damage but 
one is more easy to get and the other is more locked behind a event. Now for the set, the set we have in mind will focus on increasing its elemental and war damage, so you can make use of just your sword and axe form. After that you can then add in the necessary skills that will further enhance the charge blade's actions. So the first set will be aimed towards high rank players with the necessary jewels and charms gotten. We have critical i7 for plus 30% extra affinity to our weapon, attack boost 4 for the small buff in raw damage and 5% extra affinity, weakness exploit 3 for the plus 50 affinity upon monsters weak points, focus 3 to allow us to fill our files up within only a few hits, handicraft 3 to help sustain our weapon's sharpness much longer, although if you have a spare level 2 slot you could add in a sharp jewel instead, which then leaves you room to use whatever charm you want. Next we have Power Prolonger 2 to allow you to retain your weapon's amp shield or sword mode for a tad longer than normal, but if you can, I'd advise you to get to level 3 if you want to stay in your sword and axe form much longer and generally make a difference. Next we have Critical Element 1 which increases our elemental critical damage upon critical hits and Crit Boost 1 which is part of the Ezreal boots and don't have much effect for our current gear. Now this will give you an overall damage of 745 attack and 207 more including the power charm and power tunnel included. 105% affinity, which the 5% extra is from the attack up skill and doesn't really benefit us in any way. 300 water as it's already at a high level and around 429 defense, including armor charm and armor talons. Now the next set we have is the lower level set as currently shown and doesn't have any jewels attached to it, so it's just a plain and empty set. But it does show you all the skills that you can get by simply wearing them. As you can see with the skills you gain, it leaves you a plenty of level 1 jewel slots for you to add in whatever other skills will benefit you the most. And since you probably won't have access to some of the gear being used in a high rank set and currently some of the gear that I'm currently wearing, this one here is the closest you'll get to which is pretty sweet for newer players who want to get into elemental charge blades or want to experiment with using them. Now when it came down to playing with this weapon, it was surprisingly powerful with or without the critical element involved, with my damage fluctuating to around 20 to 30 plus on non weak points, to 50, 70 or 100 plus upon weak points, if I was to morph into my axe form or genuinely use my amp sword mode, and work from there. As long as the monster you were up against was weak to water, elemental and you hit the ideal hit zones that give you the most damage, and this varies between each monster. You also have to remember you get extra elemental damage when you amp your weapon up, so upon weak points you can also get an extra plus 10 elemental damage upon your raw hits as well. So if you land on a weak point you could get maybe plus 50 from your main raw and then you could get an extra plus 5, plus 10 or whatever from your elemental. So it's kind of a here's a bit of extra damage and here's a bit more damage upon your weapon. So it, it kind of gives you a alternative playstyle if you don't want to go ahead and use SAED all the time. Sure enough, the weapon for a charge blade elemental is pretty strong in its own right, as long as you focus on using mainly the sword and axe form to pull off the most damage, since that's where the elemental charge blades shine the most in combat. If you simply stick with that method of attacking, then you'll be fine with damage. But do remember you can always use your full SAED file discharge like I currently show in the video, even if the monster isn't immobile, or generally it's better for you to use it when the monster is immobile, because once they're down, you have a better way of aiming your SAED and actually landing the majority of your shots. But for the majority of the time, it's better off you don't use it unless you either have to or unless the monster is made vulnerable to the point of where you can go ahead and full on use it. But yeah, that's genuinely how the build is and that's how I design it. What do you guys think? Do you think it's a good set that you probably like and like to maximize even further? Or do you think that there's still room for improvement? Leave it down in the comment section. So if you enjoy the content, do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I would appreciate a lot of you do. But like always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.